doing a video about Lemmy today. We are, out. There's only one thing you can do in a video when you're talking about Lemmy, the legend that he is, and that is have a fucking drink in his honour. Yeah. So this is for you, Lemmy. Let's go. During his time as a grizzled, undying avatar of non-fuck giving, the frontman of Motorhead, Lemmy, earned a reputation in the world of rock and roll as one of the toughest motherfuckers in the industry. A reputation Lemmy was seemingly well aware of, once joking in a 2015 interview that he was pretty much indestructible after noting that five straight decades of alcohol abuse had no apparent effect on him. There's going to be some people out there who are unfamiliar with just how hard Lemmy lived. Yeah, the guy was actually insane in the way he treated his own body, and when he wasn't busy, like being a kick-ass rock star or slamming endless angel ass in heaven, he spent five straight decades launching a hellacious and unending assault on his own vital organs by binging on drink, drugs and alcohol. I think the best way to start is going to be with Lemmy's attitude towards alcohol. Well, yes, how fitting for today's video, given that we're drinking as well. well People who don't know, Lemmy was well known for one particular drink that he enjoyed, and that was Jack Daniels and Coke. A drink Lemmy consumed with such regularity that upon his passing, fans around the world unanimously decided to start calling the Jack and Coke the Lemmy in his honour. So informally, a Jack Daniels and Coke is now known as a Lemmy. Yes, amongst fans of Motorhead and Lemmy himself, but officially there is a cocktail called the Lemmy because after Lemmy passed away, Food and Beverage magazine released a full-page ad that says, Introducing the Lemmy. Why are we not drinking the Lemmy? Because we don't have any Jack Daniels. <laughs> because we don't plan these in advance. And while we don't have Jack, we have Copperberg and we have rum. But you know what? Lemmy is still approved. The thing that always gets me though is how much of it he drank. You think, so how much did he drink? And if I had said like, oh, he drank like three glasses a day, that sounds like a lot. Like three glasses of Jack, no, he drank a bottle of Jack Daniels per day, every day for 30 years straight. Buy and bought, that's my advice. Lemmy's love affair with Jack and Coke ended in 2015 when he was told by his doctor that as a direct result of drinking it for so many years, he'd gotten diabetes. So he had to stop drinking? No, he stopped drinking Jack Daniels and Coke. Wait, so he carried on drinking alcohol? Oh, of course he did. What Which is Lemmy we're talking about. What was he drinking then? Uh, he drank vodka and orange instead. And he still drank every day. Just knocking it back. Why not? Well, the thing is, at that point, it's like water to him, isn't it? Mm. Like, is it really going to affect him that much? It's like one of those things, isn't it, where he'd been doing it for so long, it no longer even affected him. To be honest, you're quite a good example to use for the idea of building up alcohol tolerance. Oh no, we're talking about my drinking habits already. <laughs> was we, it was gonna come up. How many did I drink during the Rick Astley video we did? It was it, was it was 12 shots of Jack Daniels, um, no, it was Jim Beam with honey. Yeah, 12 shots of Jim yeah. Beam in three half which, an hour. Three of which were mixed with Coke. For the people on that Wikitubia page who think oh, he drank Guinness. I think I drank three pints of Guinness. No, it was, I think it was, yeah, 12 shots of Jim Beam. It was more than 12 shots though, because there's a bit I cut out of you in oh, between yes, takes. Half yeah. shots. So he kept doing half shots so he could keep pouring at the start of a tea. You no, know, it was like basically half a bottle in it and half an hour. Well, yeah, and then not as like impressive as Lemmy doing an entire bottle in <laughs> an hour. And he drank the rest on the way home. <laughs> Just sweeped it all the way back. It was great. <laughs> Getting away from alcohol to talk about food for a moment, Lemmy was almost as bad when it came to this and reportedly subsisted on a diet of junk food, meat, and cheese. That's an awesome diet. It is, isn't it? That's like the diet you have on a bad weekend, not for 50 years straight. Did he? eat healthy food at all. No. And there's a great story from his manager where he was trying to tell Lemmy, maybe you should like, you know, eat some vegetables every now and again, because vegetables are pretty good and you don't eat them. And Lemmy told him to fuck off while eating a big bag of crisps, going, these are potatoes, potatoes are a vegetable out there, and just shoveled them into his mouth. <laughs> it's like that thing, is it like, oh yeah, I had, I had my five a day, I had two chocolate oranges, <laughs> and three candy apples and a bag of crisps. So for an ordinary person, that would be your liver and your entire digestive system fucked all up. But we're not done yet because Lemmy also smoked two packets of cigarettes every day from age 11. Christ! Yeah. And I should point out as well, he never actually formally quit smoking, he just cut down. 57. Not true. So as a rock star, I'm guessing he did a lot of drugs as well. Oh yeah, so in addition to like all this junk food, yeah, he also did a shit ton of drugs in the early days, like he was in Hawkwind and stuff like that in the early days of Motorhead. And then apparently they had no effect on him either, because he was fine when he died, apart from like, you know, the brain cancer he had, and that heart attack, and the diabetes. Yeah, but they all came at once. Yeah, that's the thing, people were probably thinking, oh yeah, he, he died, he had diabetes, cancer, and all this other shit, but they were diagnosed in the last like six months of his life. Are you surprised how healthy you are, considering all these years of 
I don't think I'm surprised. Grateful is the word you want, you know. So, let's get a tally so far of yes. how Lemmy's doing. So he smokes two packs a day. From age 11. From age 11. Drinks a bottle of Jack every day. Yeah, from like age 18. Uh, eats meat and junk food and all that shit. Yeah, but never eats vegetables. Did drugs all the time. Yeah. That's already a young dead man. Yeah, it is as well. That's like, that'd kill a rock star in his like 20s. This guy was like, I think he celebrated his 70th birthday like three days before he passed away. But I should also point out as well, he fucks everything that moved from the time he was like, you know, able to, till the point he passed away. And you think at that point, at the very least, maybe his dick would have fallen off, but no, none of that affects him either. <laughs> so let's just get all this, let's get it right. So, drank like a fish, smoked like a chimney, did drugs like until it, like for God knows how many years, ate terribly, fucked everything that moved, lived to age 70. Why am I even bothering to go to the gym? I went to the gym before I recorded this video, so I wouldn't feel as bad about drinking. Why did I even bother? Because I should also point out as well, Lemmy didn't exercise, ever. He's one of those people where you look at him and you think, that guy's never going to die. Yeah, like when he was still alive, he was like Keith Richards, wasn't it? The old joke about him where every time you have a cigarette, it takes two minutes off your life and gives it to Keith Richards. <laughs> that joke, because you just look like, if it's not killed him yet, it's not going to kill him ever, is it? He's going to die by getting hit by a plane or something like that. And even people who knew Lemmy were like, we don't understand how he's dead, because he was in good spirits up to a couple of days ago when he was still on his 70th birthday, at which he was drinking. And I think as well, my favourite thing about him is, when he wasn't on tour, like I said, he didn't exercise, he got enough exercise from running around on stage apparently, all he did was sit in his house and drink and play video games. And that, that just resonates with me. He did three shows a week where he drank during them to a crowd of people who couldn't wait to see him and then went home and drank and played video games. That'd be a great life. Lemmy was basically in perfect health up until the day he, like, died. Because uh, in an interview in 2015, he revealed to someone who asked him, like, so, has five straight decades of alcohol abuse, like, damaged your liver in any way? He went, actually, no, it's at doctor last week, and I had the liver of a newborn child. <laughs> and the person's like, how? He's like, I don't know. Oh, my liver's fine, my lungs are fine, low cholesterol. Ha ha. Fuck you. <laughs> See, I look at people like that, and then I look at me, who once was in intense pain because I rolled over badly in bed. <laughs> I once took a day off from work so there was a spider at my front door. My friends still make fun of me for pulling a muscle sucking on a straw in the cinema. <laughs> and Lemmy is surviving that. <laughs> at some point, he must have suffered from something. Um, he would apparently get out of breath if he was performing a second encore in his late 60s. Second? Yeah, second encore, because Motorhead always did two encores. And there's a story of a time where they were playing in 130 degree Fahrenheit heat, and the manager of the band went, look, Lemmy, um, you look like you're going to die. We put a lot of ice cubes in your Jack Daniels and Coke, but I don't think that's helping. Maybe we should skip this second encore. And Lemmy went, nah, I think I'll be okay. One favor though, guys, can you play Overkill slightly slower? Oh, okay. And that was his one caveat for going back on stage to do a second encore after a two hour show. Play this really, really fast song slightly slower. And I'm genuinely surprised that when he did die, he didn't have like a clause in his will that like let the band marionette his skeleton up on stage for their last few shows because he hated, hated missing shows because he was ill. So he always played through illness. And obviously, Motorhead were about to go on a tour when Lemmy died and they immediately cancelled them all. But. The fact that Lemmy didn't have a thing as well, yeah, you can just get a potato body up there, piss string, just marionette it about and just play something through a speaker. He's like, he didn't give a fuck, did he? <laughs> Not love Lemmy. Is that what you want me to do with you? What? If I die, yeah, if I die suddenly without warning, you have full permission to just marionette my skeleton up in front of his green screen, then maybe we can do a Halloween special people won't get pissed off at. Understandably, Lemmy's seeming immunity to the hard rock lifestyle made him a legend amongst his peers, many of whom were surprised when they found out he'd actually been killed. Presumably this is because a few days before he died, he was seen like drinking and partying. Yeah, and the illness that killed him, the brain cancer that eventually took his life, uh, came on so suddenly that the press release they were going to release saying Lemmy's dying didn't even have time to be written. And people might be watching over, I think, oh, that's kind of sad that he died so suddenly. But I'm just going to leave people who may be thinking that um, with a quote Lemmy gave when he was 65 years old. So at 65 years old, Lemmy was asked in an interview about his own mortality and the fact that his hard rock lifestyle might eventually kill him. You know, 
five years later, and Lennon responded with the following quote, I fucked chicks of every colour, shape, persuasion and religion. Rock and roll has had a whale of a time out of me, and I've had a whale out of time out of it. That'll do. Oh, the immortal Lemmy. Let's raise a drink to Lemmy. Oh, I ain't got any drinks left, so... Get let's... another drink. I ain't got a drink. Listen, we drank them all. You've gone to them all? Pick a random drink for me and we'll drink it to Lemmy, and we'll end the video. Alright. Here we go. Really? Archer's schnapps. We need some schnapps. For Lemmy. For Le <laughs> Lemmy would love some Archer's schnapps. Oh, man. Who, we... else, who else are we drinking to? Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's because it's quite weird. Let's drink some. Oh, so who's we raised last week? Steve Owen. Steve Owen, yeah. Mm. Oh, man, I love Steve Owen. Bob Ross. Okay. Hey, Bob Ross is dead. Yeah, he died like twenty years ago. Oh. I'm drinking another one. She forgot. Okay. You got another one. Mr. Rogers. Oh Christ. David Bowie. Yep. Um, Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. Why not? Um, Robin Williams. Basically anyone we've talked about in a video. So Marlon Brando. Yeah. Catherine Hepburn. Jackie Chan. I know he's not dead, but I want to drink to his health. If we're drinking to health, this isn't going to stop. No, I know. But I, want, I definitely don't want Jackie Chan to die. Arnold Schwarzenegger, you better not die. Yeah, you better I not. can't live in a world where the Terminator's dead. Any more? Let's do Stallone, why not? He's doing some good stuff in Creed. Oh yeah, we'll do that. Me. <laughs> I don't want to die. I guess you as well. I was going to say. Any more? Any more should, should we drink to every one of, the, every one of our subscribers? Uh, no, so I'll die. I'll definitely be dead then, but we can, we can raise Maybe the glass. Oh, no, Paul Walker. Oh, we did it for Paul. For Paul. I know you drank all this. How much was in this when you passed it to me? Uh, about a quarter. Oh, that's all right. Been a long... Day without you, my friend. Oh, no, you can't be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's pour one out as well. We're talking about Paul Walker. Let's do one last drink. Right, you know, the death of Vin Diesel's career. 